Hello one and all and welcome to this episode of the Alphabet of Hair. The letter I'm going to be looking at today is the letter E, which stands for extensions. It also stands for the name of the person who's going to be my special guest today, whose name is Earl. Earl Sims is one of the leading hairdressers in the world right now. He works with the likes of Sienna Miller, Nicole Kidman, Lily James, and that's just the very start of the list of celebrities whose hair that he does for magazines and for the red carpet. So Earl and I both use extensions when we're working, and what we wanted to do is crack open the myth of extensions a little bit and hopefully give you an insight into what we think works, what we think is good, and also give you some of the pitfalls so that you can decide which extensions you prefer to have. So we're here with the lovely Earl Sims again who features in some of my other videos and as I mentioned we are today looking at the letter E which is extensions and again the reason why oh, I bought... I thought the letter E was for Earl. <laughs> <laughs> I say that in the intro by the way <laughs> just to let you know. <laughs> so the letter E is extensions and Earl. <laughs> So, yeah, we're gonna, sorry, we're going to be looking at hair extensions. And again, the reason why I brought Earl in on this is because, like me, he has to use them for his work sometimes. And so what I want to do is talk about why do we use them? Um, are they as popular now as they have been in the past? Because I remember at one point every shoot I went on, I was putting extensions in. I don't feel that happens so much anymore. But then also, um, what I want to talk about then is what do we prefer as hairdressers to use in terms of what type of extensions because there's quite a few different ones isn't there yeah. so um let's just quickly give you a rundown of the ones that are available that we know of so first off you've got the ones that you can sew in and they are like a weft and it comes like a long weft with lots of hair on and you either cornrow the hair and sew them in or you can glue those in yeah right um or you can actually use a special tape which allows you to take them in also. And they're what's known as a more sort of like semi-permanent type um, extension. Yeah. So um, what are the other ones, though, that you know? Clip-ins, mm -hmm. which, um, you know, you can buy them with the clips on. Yeah. Or you can buy your clips separately and make your own clip-ons. So then right. you can make them how you want them, as long as you want them, as thick as you want them. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Yeah, mm. ones. Okay, and then there's also the ones that are considered more of a permanent method, which are either the micro bonds or the micro rings. And the micro rings are have a little metal clasp on, and the micro bonds you bond with a certain type of bonding glue. Yeah. Now these are very different. They are attached to the hair much more individually as like little strands of hair, and people tend to use those more as a more permanent method that will grow out for a while until they need redoing so we'll be covering those later and the other ones that I know of is ones that are called the halo extensions and they use those a lot in films where the hair is attached to a super super fine piece of circular wire and you pull it over your head and then you pull your hair out over the top yeah. um, there's a few different versions yeah. of those yeah so um, I've used those a few times they're, mm. they're quick yeah you know they're just it's literally a wire the hairs on it and you just Put it on there's no clipping no gluing mm. it doesn't irritate the hair but i mean no, you no. know you can't be sort of out in a girl force wind or anyone pulling at anything because <laughs> it will come off yeah now let's take a closer look at the temporary methods first and Earl is going to talk about the uh, clipping extensions because they're yeah. ones that you like to use more often, aren't you? Yeah, aren't they, just for speed. Yeah. So um yeah tell me a little bit more about them because I don't use those as much. No? No. Really? Hmm. You normally use Can't everything. Can't be bothered to sell oh. clips on. Well, Although you can get them with clips on. Yeah, I mean, I like a clip on because I feel like with the clips, I don't know if you can see viewers, these tiny little clips, they come in three sizes. These are the baby ones. And they snap in and out. That's out. Just clip it on the hair and then you clip it in. So, and so how do you actually attach them to the hair or what do you do? Well, what I do is I literally sort of section off the hair that I need and I back comb the root very lightly. Not it's like a fine piece. Isn't yeah, it? like yeah. a fine, fine piece of hair. Back comb it slightly, spray a bit of hairspray. Some people like to clamp the back combed piece. I don't with heat. Mm. Just a tiny bit of hairspray and it just holds Gives it a, a little bit. A little yeah. bit of an anchor and then you clip the clip 
onto the hair that you've back combed and it just holds it in mm. and then you just close it and seal it and you do those all around obviously the width of this you have to take it that that's the section of hair has to be that width doesn't it around the hair yeah i mean basically i mean i'll give you a demonstration you know <laughs> that would be at the back of the head yes yeah through there and as you get to the top they get smaller, don't they? Because yeah. the head sort of angles inwards a little bit, so they're not as wide as these. Yeah, you get smaller ones. So you just sort of put them where you feel you need them. Sometimes you don't need all of them in the head. Sometimes it's just about putting three at the back. Mm. And sometimes you really need to figure out how the hair is going to be. You might have to put a whole head in. Mm. Um, but obviously the higher you go up, it's better to use smaller clips so mm. you can actually get it flatter and if you need to pull it back. Yeah, I was just about to say, how do you deal with the fact that when somebody's maybe got a part, so like either parting in the middle or on the side, you know, if you feel like that needs filling a little bit, how well, do you deal with the clips there? Well, what I do... That's is, always my concern, that it's a little lumpy. Exactly. I sort of try and find the smaller clips or the medium clips mm. and when you're coming up to where the parting is, I try and section the fake hair round under the parting mm -hmm. or that way. Right. So it's kind of not too close to the parting. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, sometimes then you've just got to cut this right off mm. and get it right up to the parting. Yeah. And so when would you use these, Elle? What, what type of hair, what kind of effect would you use? It for? Just to let you know, this is 100% human hair. Yeah, it's real. Um, we as hairdressers on the, on shoots and working with actresses and stuff, we use human hair because I always think it behaves more like real hair than because yeah. you can get synthetic hair and there is now synthetic hair available that you can put heat on, but I still find it doesn't react as well as actual human hair. Yeah, for me, I'm all about the real hair because we haven't got time to be gauging the temperature sometimes you've got to be mm. quick yeah um but i like to use these on jobs where it's not permanent mm. let's say someone's going out for an evening mm. they need longer thicker hair put these in yeah. on a fashion shoot five o'clock you're out the door yeah so it's very day. temporary this isn't very it? temporary if you're someone who knows how to keep these in for the next day they mm. can stay in for two or three days yeah. you have to be the person who's really careful with them yeah and they can actually stay in for a couple of days just have to sleep sitting up <laughs> well you just have to be very delicate with yeah them. yeah you know but it's about a quick fix with these yeah these are not permanent mm. they're just for more look editorial or just an evening or i don't know a couple of hours you want to put them in yeah yeah. Because you're going to have a meeting and you mm. want your hair looking fabulous and you take them out. They're also not difficult to put in, are they? No. That's I know a lot of people easy. that can put them in themselves. Mm. Let's look at the next one now, which is the tape in extensions. Um, these, the, which are these. Now, the thing is with these, these aren't very wide, but you can get them much wider. Right. And mm. these can last between four to six weeks again if you treat them correctly again it's human hair and so once it's in it behaves like real hair now the way this works is is that you um so if you can see you've got the little white stickers on here now when you peel that back that is like a sticky tape like a clear sticky tape and basically what you do is you take a very very fine section of hair and then you take the tape off and you place that underneath the fine section and then let that section stick to the tape. Then you take the other one and you take off the white backing again and then you place it over the top. So it becomes like almost like it's sandwiching ah. the real hair. But I've never used them before, so... No, I've, you haven't, no, no. I've never used them. I have and they are, I do find them great. I think one of the things with these is though, I've seen people just go, I need to get them out now and they literally rip them out of their hair. Right. Now because your hair is taped to this, it can tend to rip and pull and actually pull your hair out. Right. So there are removers right. for these. And it's really important to use the removers yeah. because what that does is it makes the stickiness of the tape sort of like become almost like a slimy effect and then they just slide out. Right. And really that to me is the most important part of using right. these is the removal because if you remove them correctly, then the hair doesn't get damaged. 
Can you reuse those? Yes, you can. Oh. Yeah, because you can buy also rolls of the tape that stick on here, oh. which is almost like a double-sided tape. Got it. So you can apply it on top. Obviously, you can't keep doing that over and over again because right. you get a build-up. Right. Of tape after so you could a while. do like a couple of maybe two or three times right. yeah but yeah they are reusable because obviously they're human hair so they can be shampooed right. Right. and cleaned and then you can start again yeah so they're, yeah. Ha- they're hair extensions but sandwich hair extensions. exactly <laughs> sandwich engines <laughs> sandwich, sandwich engines <laughs> so that is those okay okay um so next with the semi-permanent ones is the ones that i use a lot of and um, Earl has those in his hand, and these are known as a weft or trax, trax, which is more of an American term, yeah, isn't it? Earl, definitely trax. an American terminology. Um, um, yeah. Again, these are made of human hair, as I mentioned before. We prefer to use human hair because it just behaves better in terms of styling and everything like that. But there's a couple of methods to attach these, isn't there, Earl? Yeah, I mean, you know, you can cornrow your own hair in certain sections and sew this to the cornrow that's what that's the method of you know how a lot of black women have done for years which has translated over into european hair Hmm. where you just cornrow certain sections of the hair and then you just sew this which means you can keep it in for like a few weeks yeah and you can wash them and stuff like that or you can glue them in Hmm. Um, now, when we say glue, there's a special type of yeah. hair glue for this kind of thing. So, not just any old glue. Don't use super <laughs> yeah, glue. Yeah, not super glue yeah. from the supermarket. No. Nor Pritt stick either. Nor Pritt Because that won't work. So, it needs to be a anything. special kind of hair glue, doesn't yeah. it, Yeah, special hair glue and a special solution to take it out with yeah. as well. Yeah, You don't just glue it in and then just think, okay, rip I'll it rip out it out. Yeah. You do need to put the solution on it, mm. rub it in, let it soak in, and then slowly slide them out yeah. to take them out. And then another method is with the tape, a little bit like the ones that I just talked about. But what with that, the tape actually comes on a roll and you take it off the roll and then attach it along and you measure it to the width of the weft so um, that's another way of doing it. And again, quite temporary. Normally can last sort of like three to four days, I think. And what about the glue ones? Well, I'd say they last three, four days maximum. Yeah, they would last three or four days. They can last longer. It depends on how you look after them. Yeah. I mean, if you're someone who's going to get up in the morning and maybe just put dry shampoo through, I'd say you get a, a good week out of them. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're going to try and sort of be yanking them and trying to shampoo bits of them, mm. they're not going to last. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I always find the white glue a little bit more gentle for hair. The black glue that's available is generally a lot stronger and is actually harder to remove. Um, although sometimes some of the white glues can have like a white residue, which can be visible. But there are ones where the white glue will dry and be more clear. Yes. Um, I tend to use that because on a, on a shoot, it's a more sort of temporary measure. Um, but I just find it comes out a little bit easier with the remover. Yeah, I completely agree. Personally, I stay away from the black glue. Me too. Because it's too... It just grabs too much and I just... You know, you're using this temporarily. You don't want to be pulling anyone's hair out. No. So the white glue's better, I feel. Yeah. That's my thing. Yeah. Okay, so um, the other version is this one, which I mentioned earlier, which is called the halo. Now, I don't know whether you can see that because it's super fine, but it's like a very fine piece of wire that you, um, well, is attached to the weft like this. And what you do is I'm going to demonstrate, although I don't have long enough hair... <laughs> I will in a minute. Um, And you sit it onto the head like this. And then I've now got a mullet, I believe. Fabulous. And then what you do is you pull with a tail comb the natural hair over the wire. So it sits like a halo. So you pull the hair over like that. Yeah. Sort of thing. But normally you would have the longer hair. Yeah. And then you would pull it over the top and then it just sort of brushes in. I know I look like I've got a bit of a mullet right now. (laughs) But obviously, if you want a mullet, you can have one. But um, again, these come in different lengths, different colours. These aren't as popular. Not many brands actually do these. Right. But I know um, I was discussing with Earl earlier that I discovered these when I was working with the actress Anna Friel, who had been in a TV show in LA. And they 
use these kind of extensions to quickly change her hair because the eras kept changing and depending on which episode she was in and they needed to change her hair very quickly from one thing to another so they use these and part of her own hair to make that happen so I feel like these are used more in film and right. less in our world yes. really although you do get the odd person that has them yeah. and likes them yeah right? the odd person I think what's great about those if you know how to work with them, they're quick. Yeah. There's no gluing, there's no attachment. It's like a jacket that you put on. Yeah. You know. And there's also no damage when you take it off. No, no. Because you just grab the hair and pull and it yeah. just pulls out of your hair. Just means if you can't be near too much sort of chaos. Yeah. Because if something gets caught on that, that <laughs> might not be cute. <laughs> Your whole piece coming off Is in that the middle talking of... from experience? Well, or? you know, I'm just saying. Yeah. Because <laughs> this one used to love an extension. Oh, love an extension. <laughs> um, so that's that one. Now, the other ones that I want to talk about, which we don't have any here because Earl and I don't actually use them. Um, but they are the more, what they call the more permanent type of hair extensions. And they are the micro rings and the micro bonds. Now, I mentioned earlier that there was a magnetic version. Yeah. Although we found that the magnetic ones tend to not be so common anymore. Now, with the rings, what they do is they close the ring so it sort of clasps onto yeah. the hair. With the bonds, it's like a glue that glues it onto the little strand. With a special gun. With a special yeah. gun. For us, for work, they're not so conducive for us because one of the things that we found with those is they're great when they're first done for sort yeah. of, you know, making somebody's hair longer. But then when they start to grow out, because it is more of a permanent thing, not permanent as in it never comes away, but it basically starts to grow out. And so the clip, the metal clip or the bond starts growing out with your hair and for us it's more difficult to actually then blow dry or go in with a curling iron if we want to get in at the roots because yeah. you suddenly hit this like barrier of metal clamps or plastic and plastic Blue. it's important to make sure you take them out at the right time because as they grow out the longer they get the more they actually pull the hair and then you can end up with what's known as tension alopecia, yeah. where the hair is being pulled by the weight of the extension. Now, that can also happen with a weft, can't it? Oh, yeah. Which I've seen where the cornrow has been done so too tiny and tight. Yeah, too yeah. tight. Too... And if you... It's like anything. If you keep doing the same thing in the same place and eventually those follicles... Yeah, they weaken, don't They're going to they? weaken. And if you do it too much, it's too tight and it, you're not sort of giving it the attention you should really you need to sort of mix it up yeah, yeah um and it's all to do with how you look after them the way they're put in the way they're sort of maintained really mm -hmm. um they're not necessarily something i would push or recommend to people because i think you do have to know how to look after them yeah they're very specialized and i think we should say at this point too with any extensions it's always good, if you can, to have a professional stylist yeah. put them in for you, as opposed to, like I say, auntie's friend, Phyllis, who lives down the road. Um, bless her, <laughs> she might be okay at it, but she might not be brilliant at it. And, you know, Earl and I have seen some disasters um, mm. from people going, oh, yeah, my friend put them in, and it's not always been great. So, in an ideal world, try and get a professional to do the extensions. One of the last things... <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Okay, it's not okay. <laughs> All right, hold on. <laughs> Ready? You stop doing that as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One of the last thing I want to talk about is how much hair you should actually have put in when you're putting extensions in. People get asked me this all the time. I was like, should I have a lot? Should I have a little? Obviously, it depends on the effect that you're going for, doesn't it? But there's a bit of a rule, I think, like hardened rule in terms of like, if your hair is like really fine and you're trying to thicken your hair with the extensions, it's good to not actually put too much hair in because the weight of it can really sort of pull on the finer hair, which is tends to be more delicate right yeah. um and so that can actually damage the hair that's already there what they say is the amount of hair that you have i believe the rule of thumb is this the amount of hair that you have you should only double that amount and then that's enough yeah i mean i think 
my thing is to put extensions in that don't look like extensions and yeah. don't over mm. extend the hair don't over fill it don't over make it yeah. too much because you've got to carry that around yeah and um, some of that as well don't you think and it's about the colour match too absolutely matching your colour as close as you can yeah oh, there's nothing worse than seeing somebody with blonde hair and then they've got like a sort of dark brown bit underneath because they match yeah. the colour obviously that's a bit extreme mm. But, you know, it's about matching up the colour. And you can get extensions in human hair where they mix the tones. The so, fades. Yeah, yeah, so it looks more natural and more yeah. real. Yeah. But then with, obviously, when somebody's hair is naturally thicker, then you can add more because thicker hair tends to be stronger, Yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, basically, um, that is the rule of thumb. That's what we suggest. Um, so uh, thanks for watching and thanks all for coming in and for giving us me, your, monsieur. <laughs> your expert opinion again on extensions and if there's anything else you want to ask us about extensions Earl's uh, Instagram is coming up so you can DM him or you can DM me or you can DM both of us whatever you want DM both <laughs> bye if you like this video and want to see more, then you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is here. And you can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter and also Instagram TV.